but I'm, I'm hopeful that the ship will be will be recovered maybe this year, but certainly I'd say in the first half of next year. Catching the upper stage of Starship using Mechazilla has always been one of the biggest challenges SpaceX needs to nail and do it soon. Elon Musk once promised we'd see a jaw-dropping demo by the end of this year to prove that both stages of Starship can be fully reused. However, with recent issues plaguing Starship's progress, Musk has had no choice but to push that timeline back. Let's break it down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On May 14th, about two weeks before Starship Flight 9, Elon Musk confidently shared one of SpaceX's next big goals, catching the upper stage of Starship using the launch tower. He said, Later this year, if fate smiles upon SpaceX, the ship will be caught by the tower, just like the booster. And yes, for anyone following the Starship program, this is one of the most anticipated moments of the year. It's not just for show, it's a crucial step towards Starship's original vision, a fully reusable spacecraft capable of launching Starlink satellites, moving cargo across Earth, or landing crews on the Moon and Mars. So far, the booster, or Super Heavy, has already been caught three times by Makazilla, including back-to-back -back successful catches during Flights 7 and 8. That's a strong sign of growing stability and confidence in the system. But, unfortunately, the same can't yet be said. For the upper stage, the Starship itself, the new Block 2 version has proven to be far from ready. With multiple failures and explosive outcomes, it seems that fate hasn't smiled on SpaceX, at least not yet. Ship 35 exploded during Flight 9 due to a propellant leak and loss of pressure in the main tank. And shortly after, Ship 36 was also lost in a ground test at Massey, following a composite overwrapped pressure vessel COPV failure. This string of setbacks has clearly thrown off several major milestones that SpaceX had hoped to reach in 2025. In a recent interview at X Takeover 2025, Elon Musk shared that he's optimistic about recovering a Starship booster sometime this year. But if not, then most likely within the first half of next year. That suggests there's still a small chance SpaceX could stick to its original plan, catching Starship with the launch tower arms by the end of this year. But honestly, it felt more like Musk was trying to reassure everyone. Because looking at where things stand now, a first demonstration sometime next year seems far more realistic. So why the delay? Well, if we zoom out and look at the bigger picture at Starbase, it actually starts to make a lot more sense. Firstly, as we all know, in order to catch the upper stage of Starship using Mechazilla, the ship must first survive the extreme conditions of space, especially during suborbital flights for now, and orbital flights in the future. We're talking about temperatures reaching 1,400 degrees Celsius during re-entry, wild pressure changes above 100 kilometers, and intense aerodynamic forces. To make it through, Starship needs a fully functional heat shield with around 18,000 individual tiles and those signature flaps that help control orientation and guide the ship precisely back toward the tower arms. But the current Block 2 version simply hasn't proven durable enough. In Flight 7, the upper stage suffered a propellant leak, lost pressure, started tumbling, and exploded. Then in Flight 8, it failed again, this time over the Atlantic due to an engine control issue with the Raptors. And most recently in Flight 9, another leak in the main tank caused the ship to lose control entirely, fail to deploy its payload, and end in yet another explosion. Even Ship 36, which wasn't part of a flight, but rather a ground test on June 18th, exploded due to a failure in the COPV, the composite overwrapped pressure vessel. That incident raised even more concerns about material durability and system integration in Block 2. All of this points to a single conclusion. Block 2's heat shield, pressure systems, and Raptor engine reliability just aren't stable enough yet to handle the brutal demands of re-entry, let alone pull off a precise catch with Mechazilla. That's why the task of attempting this historic catch has now been passed on to the next version, Block 3. If everything goes smoothly with Flight 10 and Flight 11, the first Block 3 vehicle, Ship 39 paired with Booster 18, could debut as early as the second half of October this year. But just to be clear, early flights of a new version like this are usually focused on testing reliability, identifying flaws, and rolling out patches, not on risky stunts like catching a Starship mid-air. So realistically, the catch attempt is now being pushed into 2026. Secondly, yes, the Starship upper stage will eventually be caught 
by the giant chopsticks on the launch tower. But that's almost certainly going to happen at launch pad B, not the current pad. Over the past few months, SpaceX has been working quickly at orbital launch pad 2. The tower's mechanical arms were completed back in February, and the tower itself has already gone through multiple load tests using massive water bags. At the base of the pad, the staging area under the tower now features four embed plates, likely for a future static fire test stand, suggesting that SpaceX may eventually transport ships directly to this pad after static fire testing. If all goes according to plan, Pad 2 could become operational by the end of this year. And based on various statements from SpaceX team members, including Elon Musk and Kathy Luters back in late 2024, the long-term plan has always been clear. Use Pad 1 to catch the Super Heavy booster, and use Pad 2 to catch the Starship upper stage. If SpaceX tried to catch the ship using Tower A in its current configuration, it'd be like trying to parallel park in a spot that's way too tight. Something's bound to get scratched. The catching mechanism might bump into parts it was never designed to touch, possibly damaging the fragile heat shield tiles. And even worse, the full weight of Starship pressing down on the edge of the catch arms could actually damage the very infrastructure meant to hold it in place. This is also why the chopsticks on Pad 2 have slightly narrower guide rails, adjusted to better match the smaller size and shape of the Starship, unlike the wider setup for the booster. However, as we discussed earlier, those plans seem to have stalled. With Pad B still not fully online, any attempts to catch Starship, if they're happening at all, would have to take place at Pad A. So far, there's no confirmation that SpaceX has shifted the upper stage catch plan to Pad A, and previous test attempts there haven't been successful either. So, for now, the original plan to catch Starship at Pad B still stands. But delays in both Starship development and Pad B construction make it increasingly likely that Elon Musk will have to push the timeline into next year. Thirdly, even if the infrastructure and vehicle itself are stable, catching Starship with those giant chopstick arms is a whole different level of complexity. Its shape, mass distribution, and flight profile make it way harder than catching a booster. It's like trying to catch a flying brick falling from space with perfect precision. And to be honest, this method carries some serious risk. Things could go wrong on both ends, the vehicle and Mechazilla. If Starship isn't perfectly aligned with the chopsticks, whether due to a guidance glitch, sensor error, or heat-induced warping of catch points, Mechazilla might miss. And if that happens, it could be a really bad day at Starbase. We're talking about potential explosions, shock waves, flying debris, and damage to the launch pad infrastructure, possibly even the tower itself. That's why they need more time. Time to fine-tune the autonomous flight software, recalibrate Mechazilla's movement, and maximize the chances of a clean, safe yet catch. So, what do you think? Will SpaceX pull off the first Starship catch this year, or will it have to wait until next year? Drop your prediction in the comments and let's see who gets it right. Overall, SpaceX may not attempt to catch right after Flight 10, but they're clearly gearing up for it. The chopsticks are being upgraded, construction is accelerating, and every move points to one goal, making catch capability flight ready soon. But what if they actually succeed in catching Starship for the very first time? That would shatter decades of rocket history. From NASA's golden era with the Apollo missions to today's advanced rocketry, space agencies have come up with all sorts of clever ways to bring crewed spacecraft, or upper stages, safely back home. Take the Apollo missions, for example. The crew capsule splashed down in the ocean using parachutes, and that traditional method is still being used today. Just look at SpaceX's Dragon. It follows the same concept, only with modern upgrades. When it comes to landing on solid ground, Soyuz and Boeing's Starliner are prime examples. These capsules are designed to touch down gently using parachutes and retro rockets to soften the impact. And who could forget one of the most unique landings of all time? The Space Shuttle. That thing glided onto a runway like a regular airplane. A totally different experience. And now, Sierra Space is bringing that idea back with Dream Chaser. They're a small space plane that also lands on a runway. On the flip side, if the upper stage wasn't reusable, like the SIVB stage of the Saturn V during Apollo, NASA had a few clever tricks. Sometimes they pushed it into solar orbit. Other times, they deliberately crashed it into the moon. Yes, seriously. In 1969, 
they slammed one into the lunar surface just to study moonquakes. It also helped reduce orbital junk. But all of these methods, from parachutes to runway landings to planned crashes, still relied on passive recovery or disposal. SpaceX, on the other hand, is attempting something entirely different. That's not just about saving money. It also helps protect the environment, speeds up turnaround time, and slashes launch costs to levels we've never seen before, potentially under $10 million per launch, compared to the hundreds of millions NASA spends on traditional systems like SLS and Orion. And there's more. Mechazilla allows SpaceX to catch the upper stage of Starship directly on the launch tower. No need for landing legs like the ones on the Starship HLS version. That cuts down the vehicle's weight and improves reusability. Once caught, Starship can be quickly inspected, refueled, and prepped for another flight, potentially launching hundreds of times during a single launch window that lasts just two weeks. SpaceX's current goal? To cut the turnaround time from one month, down to a week, or even just two to three days. Of course, that long-term Mars vision is still quite far off. Realistically, it might take SpaceX another 10 or even 20 years to get there. So, let's talk about something a bit closer to home. One of the most anticipated milestones coming up is orbital refueling, a crucial step for long-duration missions to the Moon and Mars. It was originally targeted for the end of this year, but it'll likely slip into early next year. Elon Musk mentioned this in a recent interview. A uh, big technology challenge after... Uh uh, being able to achieve full reuse of the full reuse of the ship is uh, orbital refilling. In short, a successful Mechazilla catch could give SpaceX the confidence and operational readiness it needs to take on something as complex as docking and transferring fuel in orbit. So, a slight delay here and there won't seriously affect Starship's overall development timeline.